We are social beings. And, and I love how you go into your book about love. I mean, I talk about it in Heal too. Love is like the ultimate healing yes. um, emotion and energy and, and kind of value um, to, to have in our environment. But it's not about, yeah, I mean, when we fall in love, our energies are high. Like we feel, you know, in, like we can't, nothing can go wrong where we feel vibrant and healthy and vital. But that's, you know, that's rare. That, that in love feeling that comes and goes. Right. But, you talk about how important it is, these little micro connections every day, connecting with other humans and feeling those little micro hits of love, um, even with a stranger and how important that is to your immune system. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's absolutely true. I think love is the most powerful force in the world. And when it gets blocked, that's when we experience pain and fear, I believe. And so we are wired for love. The vagus nerve is the super highway of the parasympathetic system in our bodies. And it's the opposite of the fight or flight system. Many of us live in chronic fight or flight. And we've developed an app recently. And I I'm sorry to say that I'm in fight or flight more than I'd like to be myself. So. <laughs> oh, wow. It gives you that feedback. That's great. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's part of our culture. And I think part of our evolutionary next step is to begin finding ways to use these higher aspects of our evolutionary biology and our brains to begin realizing that, no, it's not about competition. It's about co connection and about cooperation and about authentic connection with each other. And so the vagus nerve is what lights our eyes and causes our eyes to, when we make real eye contact with somebody, <laughs> it's what curves our lips into a smile. And so our vagus nerve operates the nerves that put us into a parasympathetic state and show how it, what happens when we make authentic connection with others, whether it's someone we see briefly on the street or someone that we have a long-term relationship with. And all of those things really help us get into a more parasympathetic and healing state. So, so parasympathetic activation is not just about relaxation, it's also about connection and it's about sharing love in a way that's authentic for each one of us. So. And again, you talk about the vagus nerve. And um, I think you say in your book about, you know, there's a way to say how strong our vagal tone is. And, and I just talked right. to Deepak Chopra, who was saying, you know, the vagus mm -hmm. nerve is so incredibly healing and you can stimulate it with your own breath um, with vagal right. breathing. So we have the instruments in our body to activate our own healing mechanism. We just need to learn. It's all about awareness, you know, and your book really is a good. great, great resource for that. Um, and, and heart rate variability, you said, is the way you can kind of assess your vagal tone. So this is where we get science and technology um, right. and, and blend it with, you know, ancient wisdom and the intelligence of the human body in, in a productive way, not a kind of corporate profit uh, pharmaceutical right lobbying way, you know? Yeah, right. Well, this is a really, it's a, it's a big issue because, you know, Quantum physics has been around now for 80 years, but it's got such massive life altering, perception altering uh, data that it's been accumulating. And it's been proving that the world is not what it appears to be and that we're not who we appear to be, that we don't really know what to make of that yet because it's such big ideas. So Newtonian physics, Newtonian science has been the science we still rely on. However, now at the beginning of this new era that we're going into, quantum physics is entering our life and entering medicine through Silicon Valley. And so now because of these new assumptions that are gonna slowly filter into our unconscious, we're gonna see a radical democratization of medicine. We're gonna see a whole different way of mind and body coming together because quantum physics holds them together and believes that you can't have one without the other. They're both really a big deal. It's, they say a lot more than that, but it's, that's one place to start. <laughs> Big deal. It is. But, but, but having, so now our smartphones are allowing us to slowly become the CEOs of our own health because as Peter Diamanda says at Singularity University, because now we have apps that give us more and more and quicker feedback about our lifestyle choices and how that's in, in, impacting our body. We have sensors in the environment or sensors on our body all that's going to completely transform medicine over the next 10, 20, and 30 years. 
and improve our awareness, our self-awareness. It gives yeah. us tools to give the feedback because the body is in constant conversation with us and we just have yes. not been versed in the language that it speaks. That's correct. And all of this and you know, this interview and your book and is, is gonna help us learn that language. Um, and I think it's beautiful. You, you mentioned Newtonian physics and, and, um, and, and talking about the love molecule and everything you know, modern medicine is based on kind of Charles Darwin and Newtonian and, and, and Newton and Descartes um, and all of their philosophies. And, um, but I, again, just like Pasteur at the end of his life changed his tune. I think if you study in your book, you say, if you study Darwin's later works, right. his message kind of switched from survival of the fittest to love and survival of the kindest. Yes. And we've yeah. ignored that. <laughs> I mean, how do we just ignore that? That's everything. Yes. In The Descent of Man, he talks about specifically human evolution, which is very different than the evolution of animals. And, and so he talks about survival of the fittest, but he mostly talks more about cooperation and about love. And I, I forget the exact number of times, but he mentioned love like something like 95 times in in um, the descent of man, so yeah, <laughs> so we took part of him, but we didn't take the whole story with Darwin. Not, not very Darwinian of him. <laughs> no, <laughs> Darwin wasn't very Darwinian. Darwin was not Darwinian at the end. Um, so I, I mean, you have so many beautiful stories in your book, um, and and I want to just before we dive in, because I want you to share one or two of them, um, because they're so just. I mean, I was crying at portions of your book when. Mm. You know, Matt's neighbor said he should go down to Brazil and pay for his ticket. And then he met the love of his life right. and was told he couldn't have kids and he had kids. I was like, oh, my God, um, so much is possible. Um, but do you see as a psychiatrist and then going on this work, you know, on this investigation of spontaneous healings, do you see or do you have an intuition about emotions and and certain disease is manifesting in different parts of the body or chakra. For instance, I've heard it say like breast cancer often expresses in women that have neglected taking care of themselves and in the mammaries, it's, that's our nurturing, you know, organs. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's, there's no way to prove this obviously, but it's, right. it's, there's a lot of correlation. I think it's so fascinating. There was one guy that got cancer of his testes maybe. And mm. there was, there was emotional trauma around Yes. partnership and sex, you know? So mm -hmm. anyways, yep. and I would just love to hear you kind of. Yeah, that's a really big topic. And so let me yeah. just walk around that a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's working in a medical hospital over and over. I can't tell you how many times when I look at the chart of a person before I go into their room and speak with them, if I see a woman who's had multiple abdominal surgeries, that right away kind of keys me in to the kinds of things I might want to ask about. Does she have a history of trauma and that sort of thing? And it's absolutely true, I think, that the body is often a metaphor for what some deeper part of us, whether you call that the deeper self or the soul, is trying to learn. And so the body really tells us so much. And we need to begin to open our eyes and our hearts and our ears to hear that again, because the body is a metaphor for what we're trying to learn. And so if a woman has had abdominal surgeries over and over again, it's not unusual that there's a trauma history there. And you raised about the man who had the testicular cancer. These kinds of things do have, um, do raise questions. Now, I also want to also offset this by saying that we all have a complex collection of true and false beliefs that are very unique to us, to growing up in our particular home, the kids we played with on the playground, the different experiences we've had and how we've interpreted or perceived those experiences. And so as we grow up, we have a very different set of beliefs. And so one person who gets cancer may get that in the context of someone else who may have the same diagnosis, but it could be a very different sort of thing. And so we have to look at the, the unique meanings for each particular person. I think that's really important. But again, um, well, let me say this. You mentioned breast cancer. A story I did not tell in the book is about a woman who is a story that I did uh, learn a lot from. And she had breast cancer. And in the context of getting better, she really went through a big change, kind of a metamorphosis of her own 
way of being in the world. She was married to a guy who I think loved her, but he, I think he was pretty rough. I think he was verbally abusive at times and disconnected emotionally. And she was very demure, very sweet. She uh, was, I think she spent a lot of her time taking care of the emotional needs of others. She spent a lot of her life taking care of others or, or the needs that she perceived that they had. And in the and she and in the context of getting better, she became more racy. She became more. Um, I'm going to tell you what I really think. Okay. She became more. Her personality became more saucy in a way, you know. And uh, she really, I think, she became more authentic. Yeah. And less. She. I think she became more willing to take up space in the world and not feel like she had to apologize for that, or. Um, because yeah. I think I think part of her being demure and very sweet was not feeling comfortable taking up space in the world and making problems for others if she needed to yeah. in order to be her authentic self. <laughs> so I think I think that was an important part of her healing. It's so interesting to me how often that a person has said to me that it took an illness for them to wake up and realize they needed to stop taking care of everyone else, or they needed to stop responding to the perceived expectations of others. Mm -hmm. And that somehow getting better was related to a major shift around that, to taking more seriously the kinds of activities that put a light in their own eyes or help them know and experience their own worth and value and feel comfortable taking up space in the world. And this comes across in a lot of ways. It's so interesting to me that when a person gets diagnosed with a fatal illness, whether it's cancer or something else, they might be terrified at one level, but at another level, sometimes the response will be, wow, if I've only got 12 months to live, maybe I don't have to go to law school because it's my dad, yeah. I'm free. I can, I can do what I want to do. <laughs> and right. that, that death of the false self, that sometimes becomes the doorway into a different life and then sometimes when they thought they were going to die, they don't. And so <laughs> raises a lot of questions. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gorris. Thank you so much and be well.